Hello, and welcome to our in-depth review of Enchanted Princess. Enchanted Princess is a world-class cruise ship which joined the Princess fleet in November 2021. She has a gross tonnage of around 145,000 tonnes and carries around 3,700 passengers at full capacity, so she is a big ship. And you should factor this into your decision making if you're somebody that doesn't like the larger, more modern cruise ships of today. In this review, we're going to discuss all of the important elements of a cruise that matter to you. The dining and restaurants, the bars and lounges, the cabins and suites, and the entertainment and the daily activities on board. We'll cover everything that we loved about Enchanted Princess, as well as the areas that we thought were pretty awful. And yes, that may involve mentioning the Medallion app. So if you're ready, let's start the review. We stayed in a mini suite this time round on Enchanting Princess, and we have to say it is the best cabin or suite we've ever had on a cruise ship. It was immaculately clean, the decor was fresh and contemporary, it was very practical, featured plenty of storage, the two interactive TVs were very generous in terms of what it allowed you to do as the user, and the variety of movies on demand was huge. Something that is unusual about world class cruise ships like Enchanted Princess is that they don't have outside cabins, meaning when it comes to deciding which type of cabin to go for, you'll have to choose between opting for an inside cabin or making the leap and going for a balcony cabin. The good news is though, because 75% of cabins on board Enchanted feature a balcony, this ultimately leads to balcony cabins being more fairly priced, and are actually around the same as what you would pay for an outside cabin on the older, smaller, grand class cruise ships with the company. If you decide to make the leap and choose a balcony cabin on board Enchanted Princess, please note that a majority of cabins on Deck 8 are obstructed by lifeboats and davits, so if you choose a balcony cabin on Deck 8, be sure to choose a number which doesn't fall between these ranges. Like all Royal class cruise ships, balcony cabins and suites on Enchanted Princess do have balconies which lack the depth that people have come to expect on other cruise ships, meaning sun lounges are only found on S2 through to S5 grade suites. Any cabin grade below will feature upright chairs and a table, the size of the balconies on board Enchanted Princess are one of the most critiqued aspects about this ship, and it is important that you consider the size of the balcony before booking. While the balcony sizes didn't bother us, it will most likely bother those that enjoy sunbathing on their balcony, whom have come to expect sun loungers when booking a balcony cabin or mini suite. Let's talk food. In previous videos, we've observed how the standards of quality and presentation of dishes in the main dining rooms on cruise ships have fell considerably since cruise operations recommenced, and that also seems to be the case on Enchanted Princess. While the food served was better than what we were served on Cunard and Royal Caribbean in recent months, it just wasn't up to the standard you'd expect from a premium cruise line like Princess. Menus have been considerably cut compared to how they were pre-2020, the quality of the ingredients seems to be satisfactory rather than wow, which is certainly how they are advertised to us when we book a cruise, and while the presentation of dishes is better than some of the slop we had on the likes of Cunard and Royal Caribbean in recent months, it just doesn't come close to how Princess promote their main dining on their website, in brochures and in promotional videos. During the four nights we were on board, we had had food which was over-seasoned, chicken which was overcooked, and a key lime pie which instead of being made from cream cheese as you'd expect, it was made from synthetic instant whip. Despite service being absolutely abysmal all over the rest of the ship, which we'll come onto in a moment, the service in the main dining room was very friendly and efficient, something which has been absent on recent cruises with other cruise lines. So for main dining on Enchanted Princess, it was the quality of the food which we felt could do with improvement. While some of you will think that we're being picky, these observations are important as Princess are a premium cruise line and sit alongside the likes of Holland America, Celebrity and Cunard. While the food in the main dining is significantly better than what we've had on Cunard in recent months, it does fall short of the quality and standards of the main dining on board Celebrity and Holland America ships. And we have to say, when it comes to available options for vegetarians and vegans, it was very poor. For evening meals, there was usually only one option available for a starter and a couple at best for a main course, and if you dined in the main dining room for lunch, sometimes there wasn't a single option for a vegetarian, let alone a vegan. The World Fresh Marketplace is the buffet restaurant on board Enchanted Princess, and it is pretty big, taking up almost a third of the deck space on Deck 16. The World Fresh Marketplace did impress us, it's beautifully decorated, 
well laid out, the variety of dishes on offer come very close to matching what you get on celebrity ships and the standards of the cuisine is on par. Enchanted Princess has a decent variety of speciality dining venues and we were impressed by the standard and quality of the food in many of them, even if we did feel that some of the food was a bit overpriced. Sabatini's is an Italian restaurant which serves a 5 course menu for $25 per person. The standard of the food is amazing, the surroundings are beautiful and the service felt incredibly personal, which is something we look for when dining at an upcharge restaurant. Even though we liked everything we ate here, the menu just isn't as broad and premium as what the old menu was a few years back. For example, Sabatini's used to serve a dish called Lobster Three Ways, which is honestly one of the best dishes we've ever eaten. It was next level stuff. Even with a reduced menu, Sabatini's is still worth the $25 per person cover charge in our opinion, and it is a venue we'd return to the next time we sail with Princess Cruises. You also have the Crown Grill and believe us when we say it is one of our favourite restaurants at sea. Unfortunately we weren't able to dine here on Enchanted Princess as it was fully booked 4 months before sailing. It is an incredibly popular venue and once you've tried the food here you'll realise why. The Crown Grill is $29 per person and you can choose between amazing steaks and seafood dishes for starters and mains and heavenly desserts such as the Key Lime Bar and Salted Caramel Cheesecake. It honestly is one of the best restaurants we've dined at and we recommend booking as soon as you have access to the Medallion app as it can sell out months before your cruise. The Ocean Terrace is Enchanted Princess's sushi restaurant and once again it is a must, particularly if you're a sushi lover. This is undoubtedly the smallest upcharge venue on Enchanted Princess but we have never had an issue getting a table here. Ocean Terrace operates by a first come first serve basis, meaning there is no booking required this venue charges passengers for each dish they order. We ordered around 5 plates of food and the bill came to around $36 which seemed like a very fair price when you consider the premium ingredients you were served here such as scallops and caviar. If we could give you a tip it would be try and get a seat at the bar so you can watch the talented chefs make and prepare your sushi right in front of you. It all adds to the experience of the meal and this is a venue which we would certainly recommend and return to next time we sail with Princess. Bistro Salomer is Enchanted Princess's French restaurant. This dining venue is charged at $29 per person, which pays for a three course meal excluding drinks. We had no issue with the quality of the food here, although the presentation of the fish and chips was ridiculous. Despite the head waiter's best efforts to try and explain why three fish fingers were served to me on a fancy napkin, I still don't understand it. I also think that it's a little deceiving to refer to the dish as fish and chips, as I'm pretty sure that most people would have expected something much different to what they're actually served here, especially if you're from the UK and you know a good plate of fish and chips when you eat one. Nothing really blew us away at Bistro Selamer, everything that we tried just seemed very mediocre, and didn't feel worth the cover charge in the same way that Sabatini's, Crown Grill and Ocean Terrace did. So unfortunately, Bistro Salomere isn't a restaurant we would be keen to try again. There are also a handful of casual dining venues on board such as the International Cafe where you can grab an egg and cheese muffin for breakfast or something naughty for a late night snack. And Gigi's which is Enchanted Princess's very own pizzeria. Gigi's operates by a first come first serve basis and is very popular so be prepared to have to wait around an hour on a sea day before you can be seated. The pizza wasn't too great here if truth be told not very cheesy, the base was as tough as a dartboard and it just falls short of the incredible pizza you can grab up on deck 16 by the pool area. Next to Slice you have the Salty Dog Grill which serves comfort food such as hot dogs, burgers, nachos and fries throughout the day and although there was forever a very long queue here, the food was worth the wait. Overall we were pretty impressed with the dining on board Enchanted Princess but experiencing difficulty in booking the speciality venues on board is unfortunately becoming an experience all too familiar. Enchanted Princess was sailing at full capacity and with a skeleton crew it would seem. In all of the cruises I've done over the years I have never seen a ship so understaffed and crew so stressed and overworked. 
As someone that works in the industry myself, I'm aware that many cruise lines, including Princess, are having difficulty hiring crew that have the required documentation to work at sea. Add this to the isolation policies which Enchanted Princess has in place, whereby crew need to self-isolate if they so much as sneeze, then you add that to the Medallion app which is putting monumental pressure onto an already understaffed and overworked crew, the result is queues, queues and more queues. We're not going to sugarcoat this, the Medallion app is awful. It doesn't work, the crew hate it, the passengers loathe it, and in its current form it is entirely detrimental to a passenger's cruising experience. The app has the potential to be one of the best, if not the best in the business. There's some great ideas there, like being able to track a fellow cruise passenger, like being able to order a coffee or a snack to your sun lounger, but the problem is, it's too good to be true. Princess have tried to do everything all at once, rather than create a basic app and add to it over time, which would have made a lot more sense. Princess are expecting everything to be done through the Medallion app, whether that be checking in, booking shore excursions, ordering drinks, and the app just cannot cope with the level of demand, particularly with the ship's Wi-Fi being so poor and temperamental. So, on this cruise, if a passenger wanted a drink, they had two options. You could either join a very long queue at the bar, or you could order through the Medallion app, and your drink would either take around an hour to arrive, if you're lucky, or it wouldn't arrive at all, which in fact happened to us on four different occasions whilst we were on board. We happily paid extra for the Princess Plus package, so we had Wi-Fi and all-inclusive drinks, but to be honest, it was a waste of money on this particular cruise, as the Wi-Fi was so weak you could barely load an email or a WhatsApp message. And with the lengthy queues at the bars and a non-functioning app, we were lucky if we were able to order four drinks per day. Princess have an attitude towards the Medallion app that it's too big to foul. They've piled too much time and money into it and they're pressing on regardless of whether passengers and crew are united in their contempt for it. They're deaf to any criticism of it and while that attitude persists, this technological nightmare is going to continue to ruin a passenger's cruising experience. I just wish to give every passenger a keycard again and stop with this nonsense right now. So yes, the service was pretty damn bad we're sorry to say. It was virtually impossible to find a crew member wandering around the pool deck offering drinks and that is because they were focused on all of the orders which were coming through the medallion app by the second, and the queues of passengers stretching for yards at each and every bar. Putting it bluntly, if I was a first time cruiser and I experienced this sort of mayhem when it comes to booking restaurants and ordering a drink, I don't think I'd ever want to step on board a ship again. Service on Princess ships pre-2020 used to be fantastic. I just hope that Princess cruises find the reverse gear and they head back in the direction where they used to do things so well. There was never a shortage of things to do on Enchanted Princess, and thankfully the ship had a very good cruise director. By day there is activities going on all round the ship, from bingo to live music acts by the pool, and by night the ship comes alive with fantastic West End style shows in the Princess Theatre, and comedians and tribute acts in venues such as Princess Live and Vista Lounge. But if you're somebody that doesn't really appreciate that lively atmosphere, Enchanted Princess is so big you can still find plenty of places to relax and unwind. And no place is better than the Lotus Spa. The Lotus Spa is charged at $49 per person per day, or we paid $119 per person for the four nights we were on board. The price you pay includes full use of the hydrotherapy pool, the Swedish orthopaedic beds which realign your spine, a selection of different tropical rain showers which release an aroma as you wash, a dry sauna, and two different types of steam room. While $49 per person may seem expensive to some, it was certainly better value than what Cunard and P&O charge since the pools in cruise operations, where Cunard charged $35 per person for a two hour slot and P&O charged £35 per person for the same amount of time. For us, the Lotus Spa is definitely worth a visit, and it's always nice to know that they limit numbers in the spa to 12 so that this gorgeous facility doesn't feel too overcrowded. You also have the sanctuary to unwind and relax. Prices here do vary by cruise, but usually it's around $40 per person per day, and sometimes they do offer packages which cover the whole cruise. The sanctuary includes the use of the comfortable seating, use of the hot tubs, and you can order light bites and lunch to your seats. 
You can also indulge in some pampering up here too if you so wish. While the sanctuary is lovely and it looks great, it's always been our view that it's a bit overpriced, and it isn't something we'd be prepared to put our hands in our pockets for. But that's not to say it isn't a gorgeous facility, I guess we all like to enjoy our cruises in a different way don't we? Enchanted Princess really does have some wonderful pool areas for you to relax in the sun. You have the main pool area on deck 16 which comprises two decent sized swimming pools and a few hot tubs scattered on the same deck and above on deck 17. At the aft of deck 16 you have the wake view pool which provides some much needed shade areas and some of the best views on the entire ship. Deck 17 forward is where you can find the retreat pool which is an adult only pool for passengers of 16 years and older. It is conveniently located next to the retreat bar and with it being hollow and surrounded by deck 18 above the retreat pool area and the sand loungers lining the poolside can sometimes offer a much needed shade area from the sun. If fitness is your thing, Enchanted Princess has a fully equipped gym and fitness centre where you can burn off all those calories you've consumed on board. The gym is included as part of your cruise fare and as gyms go on cruises, it's very impressive. With the size and scale of Enchanted Princess, you can be as active or relaxed as you want to be. There are plenty of places for you to chill and read a book and the pools are very inviting. The ship also has the amount of hot tubs you'd expect from a ship of this size and is certainly more generous than the two measly hot tubs you'd get on P&O Britannia. Overall, it wasn't a perfect experience this time around in Enchanted Princess and it's clear that Princess are really struggling with crewing and the medallion app which they've chucked so much at. While the ship itself is stunning in terms of its decor and how clean it is, the drop in standards when it comes to service will shock experienced cruisers to their core. And when it comes to first time cruisers, if they experience what we did on board, it might be enough to put them off from ever walking up a gangway ever again. If you've seen our previous reviews of other ships, then you'll know that the service on most cruise ships isn't what it was once upon a time, but on Enchanted Princess, it was something else. We've never seen crew so stressed and overworked, and it wasn't nice to observe. We know that all cruise lines are in the same situation and that they're all trying to get themselves out of the financial mess they're now in. But for the life of us, we cannot see how the Medallion app is helping them in their situation and it's certainly not going to entice too many people to rebook with Princess Cruises if they've had to endure the chaos on board that we did. So would we cruise on board Enchanted Princess again? Yes, but it won't be for a while. Enchanted Princess as a ship is beautiful and it is better than other Royal Class cruise ships such as Britannia in several ways, but with how dire the service was on board, the food not being particularly great in the main dining rooms and how many times we found ourselves swearing at our phones because the Medallion app wouldn't work, Enchanted Princess failed to deliver on several of the key areas of expectation when we go on any cruise, especially with a premium cruise line like Princess. But we really do emphasise that we love the ship. Beautifully decorated, stylishly appointed and the best cabin we've ever stayed in based on practicality and comfort. So, if you've got an upcoming cruise on Enchanted Princess, make sure you continue to look forward to it because there are still a lot of things to enjoy on this magnificent ship. If you've sailed on Enchanted Princess recently, let us know how your experience compared by dropping us a comment below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe to our channel for future cruise content. We'll see you next time.